Why are you kissing that animal? Play? You know we're gonna eat this thing, right? No, we're not. Yeah, I am. What's up, y'all? Billy from Permapastures Farm. Went and got cold on us. So here I am, G'd up from the feed up, and this one here is eating a bucket of comfrey that we just harvested. And of course, the rest of them will get to it too. All right, y'all. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. It's been up here in my cabeza for a while, and that's regarding how to feed yourself indefinitely with ruminants and really with a bunch of other things, y'all. In the past, we showed you how we raised chickens for free while producing anywhere between one to three cubic yards of finished compost every single week using the chicken tractor on steroids. We've talked about how we raise our pigs for 21 cents a pound. I know that sounds crazy, but I got the video proof to prove it. You can go back and look. But I, you know, one thing I haven't talked about are your ruminants and how they can feed you indefinitely for a really small investment. One of the ways in which we do it, obviously, they eat grass. And as you can tell down there, we got babies and babies and babies. In fact, all the ones that had babies had twins. Check it out, y'all. For about a $500 investment, think about this. You could get yourself, if you wanted to deal with it, you can get yourself a ram for use. I don't know what they're going for this day. Let's say it was 150 bucks. What if I told you for that little investment that you could put yourself in meat indefinitely? Now, that might sound a little bit crazy to some folks, but stop and think about this for a minute. Well, this one here is a little upset because you're not getting, okay, I'll give you some comfrey too. All right, everybody knows I got a comfrey bucket. This is one of the ways we get the minerals in them because this is in fact a dynamic accumulator and we'll just go ahead and dump it out right there get them off my back a little bit it's a dynamic accumulator and um that's where they get a lot of their minerals so that's something to have in a preparedness situation as well here's what i'm getting at y'all for about 500 bucks it could be more let's say it was double you could have yourself in some serious meat security indefinitely provided you look after your grazing habits Obviously, you can't stick them out there. You're not going to make any money. You're not going to save any money if you're not, quote, kicking the hay habit, if you know what I mean. Let's just think for a minute. These sheep, these hair sheep, a lot of these guys have a tendency to have twins. And as you can see right down there, here they are playing king of the mountain over there. All of them are going to grow up. And the ones I'm getting at in particular, the ones I know for sure aren't going to stay and not stay here. Or maybe you could sell them. You can get your investment back that way. But all the rams are going to ultimately go in my freezer or maybe someone else's. So that's one way. And depending on how much land you're working with, you can constantly take out the ones that aren't necessarily going to be productive or the ones that are problem children, put them in the future. As you can tell, I'm getting an amen down there. You could either put them in the freezer, you could sell them. There's any number of things you can do. But as long as you manage these solar collectors down here that we call grass, you can do it indefinitely. Now, one of the biggest problems we run into as homesteaders is that so many people, especially in this day and age where everybody's a little bit afraid of what's going on in the world, rightly so to a certain extent, people are going out there and you're buying way more than your carrying capacity can withstand. And then you're in the point where you're going to destroy the land and not be able to maintain it the way we're doing it as you can see this is green and over there in the distance it isn't those are areas which we've talked about before where we've actually used hay to recover that area and we won't have to do it again because we've been down this road there's other places on this property where i could where i could take you where it was all thorns and thistles and thicket and you name it <laughs> all of them are going nuts right now they're looking for mom Yep, and they're going to try to figure out which one is mom. <laughs> and you can, you can get a great deal of joy out of it. In fact, I've talked about it numerous times. One of the most joyful experiences I get to experience every single day is when we pull up this net and we move it to a new area. Now, this time of year, they're going to come in here, they're doing a little bit of clipping, and then they're going to move on. We're going to keep them moving, as we always do. And this one here is just being uber, uber friendly. She wants to get pet, but they're not pets. You dig? So you got you to gotta keep that in your head because if you don't call when you have to, you're going to wind up with a petting zoo. 
That's not what we want. What we want to do is extract from this system, just like the chicken tractor on steroids, where it can run indefinitely. We extract this from this system, what we need in terms of animals, in terms of food, and then we keep the rest out there to keep working for us. Ain't that right, girl? So that's exactly how it's done, y'all. I mean, it could be a $500 investment, and I'm saying start small. If you go out there and go get a bunch of animals, you're going to find yourself on the hay habit. There are places and points and applications in which that makes sense. In areas where we got bare ground, like we have up in that area that we're turning into a silvo pasture area. It can be in other places, but ultimately you don't want to be on there endlessly. And you will be if you don't get your stocking density right. Every month it gets better and better and better, not only with our grazing habits, but also with some of the compost extract and some of the other things we talk about on Patreon that we're using out here that are making this thing extraordinary. You can do this indefinitely as long as you got your stocking density on point, which is one of the biggest problems I see with a lot of beginning homesteaders, even experienced homesteaders. I can take you up and down this road with everybody with cows, sheep, you name it, and the grass might be that tall if they have any at all. And then here it is where we're getting close to the spring flush around here and people are still feeding, feeding hay and they're almost certainly going to do it almost all year long when you don't have to. You just got to get that stocking density right. So y'all, in a nutshell, we got a self-licking ice cream cone. And over there in the distance, we got pretty much the same thing with the chickens once we get it in that chicken tractor on steroids. There are systems out there, y'all. The only difference is it's going to require more out of you. If I were to say there's a downside to any of this, that's it. Is it's going to require a little more human labor, but really, how much is it? Because our chores every day with just me and Michelle probably amount to, at the most, moving them. And that's taking our sweet time, not being in a big rush for anything. It might take 30 minutes a day. Now, if you can't invest that much time, then maybe these models aren't for you. But... These are ways, like I said, where you can feed yourself indefinitely, extract from it what you need. And then in the end, of course, Michelle is going to focus on these babies. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Wow. Not all cute. Folks, hopefully this is a blessing to you. And there's other things that you can do out there that don't necessarily include hay. We've talked about it before. We use tree hay, which Michelle is something of an expert on. We use tree hay, literally getting the stuff out of the trees coppice them, throw it out here to the sheep. We got video after video of that. And then also, like I was de demonstrating a moment ago, we feed them tons of comfort. Instead of using a feed bucket to get them to go where you want them to go, we can use a bucket full of comfort. We sell it at the website if you need any. All right, y'all, hopefully this was a blessing to you. If you need a redemption shield hat or anything else they sell, we're big in the grounding. We got that down below processing video which shows you what to do at the end stage of any of these animals got that down below as well till next time this is billy from permapastures farm where permaculture is my passion and folks everything i just talked about is permaculture we'll see you next time